wanted to ask you about the apathy, at least here in Canada. No one talks about air pollution. Yeah. We know the World Health Organization labels it the most dangerous environmental health threat. There's no conversation on it in the West. Can you maybe touch on that? Is this just something that we need as a problem here in Canada? Are people in China and India yeah, talking about air pollution? Or I would say we are really blessed. We live in Canada. We are fortunate to live in this environment, which is very clean. In general, outdoor environment is very clean compared to the Asian countries right now. Okay, because we have uh, less population, we have uh, less emission sources, and also the government are very strict on the emission standard implementation. Anyway, so we have a very clean air overall. That's why the general public do have a lot of concern over our mm. air quality here, even for environment in general. Yeah. We are lucky, but in fact. Scientifically, we have to say we have problems in air pollution or air quality problems from indoor environment. Okay. Which is called indoor air quality or indoor air pollution. Okay. Because we are living in the cold climate. Okay. Canada, even now, you see, yeah, it's yeah. still snowing <laughs> just a couple of days ago, right? <laughs> we have to spend most of our time indoor. But in order to save energy, the building envelope is not sealed, that, uh, is sealed very tightly, okay? We rely on the HVAC system to bring the air quality. That really, it is a balance between the energy and the environment. Actually, indoor environment is not as clean as we think. Okay. People don't uh, realize that in Canada because maybe because we don't feel, we're not well educated. Yeah. Or maybe we're not well informed, okay? Uh, what what are the what are the dangers or what's contained in indoor air pollution? You know, I'm working in an office. It's yeah. obviously not PM 2.5, but what are what would the concerns be? For indoor environment, indoor air pollution really depends on the indoor environment you are in. For example, in the uh, in the laboratory like this, mm -hmm. you deal with a lot of chemicals. Maybe those are the sources of the air pollutants, like sulfur dioxide. For example, we are dealing with here. If you work in a painting facility. A candle manufacturing device, right? An automobile assembly plant. The volunteer organic compound would be the major air pollutant. Okay. You smell it right away when you walk into it. Okay. If you work in a, a business office, yeah. mainly not so much air pollution there, but mainly it's our Excel uh, the, the device, still. carbon dioxide, okay. and uh, dust, uh, some penetrating dust particles. Okay. Sometimes HVAC system doesn't work exactly as we say because nanoparticles may penetrate through okay. the smaller ones. And uh, there's a leak in the filtration system, okay? But it overall, it really depends on where you work. I would say industrial facility is more uh, polluted. Okay. More polluted than the business uh, environment. Okay. okay. Um, just talking about the average citizen, you know, we're hearing about air pollution. What can they do to help? What can the average person do? Can they? Okay drive a more efficient vehicle? What, you know, what, are, what are things that we can do to help? Do so when we talk about uh, our contribution to the environment, uh, we really already, by definition or by default, we were thinking about the outdoor environment. Okay. How do we protect the environment and protect the air? Okay, then we need to uh, change our uh, habits. For example, we always drive car, we hesitate to take uh, the public transit yeah. because for the convenience, right? But imagine our contribution to air emission mainly from the transportation sector. Okay. Okay. If we drive less, we're going to reduce the air emission from the engines. Okay. Okay. Another one is basically our luxury living standard. Yeah. <laughs> we have lights on all the time. We cook all those things. All contribute. If we live a relatively more thrift life, we may save the energy consumption from the power plants. All those things. Okay. I see. Uh, for indoor environment. That's something really uh, relatively unaware territory, I would say. Say, for example, we really do not complain about our working environment for the typical workers, for the manufacturers who hire a lot of employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, they really they may know they are working in a toxic environment, but yeah. they do not complain because there's no certain policy to govern that. That's right. Because the industrial facility is owned by the Owner. By their employer and By their the employee, accepting, yes. not the employee. So, but actually, a lot of uh, health problems are created because of the toxic working environment. Then we rely on education, also rely on the government yeah, so, policy. Yeah. So, so I guess that kind of leads to my last question: Is what can people do to protect themselves? 
it seems in Canada this is yeah. an indoor setting, so in industrial yeah. facilities, but even in, in Asia, in an outdoor setting, how can people protect themselves from air pollution? If they live in a polluted environment, one thing, immediately they need to wear dust masks, which can work to protect the dust uh, particles. Okay. Okay, but uh, that's, that's only for dust masks. But imagine you're working, you're working in uh, a heavily polluted street, on the street, okay? I can't name which city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe the 401 in <laughs> yeah. Don Valley Park okay, in uh, Toronto, yeah. yeah. Rush hour <laughs> along uh, downtown Toronto, Toronto yes. right? Really, there are a lot of dust particles from the engine emission, but there are also toxic gases. The carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, those are also toxic. Those dust masks, maybe you want to modify the dust mask media so this is to capture the a different filter membrane, different to, filter membrane to get the gas. for gases. Okay. okay. So I would say that they need protection. They need the protection gears. Okay? okay. Also try to avoid those avoid areas those situations. and the time during that hours, maybe. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I think that's going to wrap up this episode of uh, Air Pollution TV. Chow, thank you very much for your time. The one thing I'm, you know, to our viewers out there, if, if you have any questions on air pollution or any comments, you know, perhaps we can circle back and, and ask Professor Tan. I'm certainly not the expert. Uh, so any questions out there on, on how air pollution affects you or, you know, anyone in your family? Maybe we can talk, talk to Chow in the future. Exactly. Okay. I'll All right. I'll be happy to answer your questions.